guess that's what I get for leaning into the best friend. Now I've got one more accent, two less hands here for holding. Ignored all of my reasons for running far from the feeling. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Spore the Warning podcast. This is review number 767 with a review of Challengers. I'm Christopher Schneezy. And I'm Stephen Miller. And if you're joining us for the first time, the Spoiler Warning Podcast is a weekly film review program. Each week on the show, we're going to dive in, debate, discuss, and argue over the latest films coming to a theater near you. This week, we're getting getting together to talk about Challengers, which is a film that centers around a little game called tennis. Um, Steven, you fancy yourself a tennis uh, person? <laughs> Uh, I I definitely wouldn't call myself a tennis person. Technically, when I was maybe nine years old, I took tennis lessons for like a year. So I I, I am aware of how to play, but I never, like the lessons never even got to the point where you were playing a match in front of people, right? It was just like learning how to serve and how to hit the ball and everything. Um, In the few times I have wound up somewhere where there's a tennis court, you know, like a a resort or Airbnb at a fancy place or whatever. Like I have decided to play whoever was around and I do think it's a fun game, you know, like I, I am not good at it by any means, but I have a lot of energy for running around and trying to hit the ball. And I think my (laughs) energy, it is so weird and unexpected that I have beat way better people like a few times in my life, just because they're like, what the fuck is this guy doing? (laughs) Like, I'm just hitting, I'm hitting shots that they don't think I'm going to hit, and I'm not doing the normal thing. Yeah, you're not, you're not returning the ball the way they would expect it, so it's actually harder. It, exactly. <laughs> like, if if tennis is, like, a mental meeting of the minds or whatever, then I'm just this, like, fucking wild card. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm, I'm definitely not good, like, uh, by any means. But I do like it. I think of all the sports that I've, like, played with people before, like, I've done a little bit of um flag football and played pickup soccer and stuff i I think tennis is definitely the one i feel most confident in and also i just have the most fun with it i I like how simple and every move matters you know in a way that i that i like how about you yeah i mean i i've I've never watched tennis um like you i did have a stint where i (laughs) i used to play not in front of people but uh you know, growing up in apartment complexes, one of the things you get are pools and tennis courts. Um, and mm-hmm. there was a kid in, in our in our uh, apartment complex who I became friends with. And, like, we would just get home from school and play tennis until the sun was about to go down and then go home. And then that was just the thing that we did every afternoon because that was available. We did try to take some lessons that were, like, you know, somebody came into the complex and was like, I can do lessons. And, like, that was never as fun as just playing with you know, each other after school um so I, I didn't really stick with that for a very long time but you know i i, I enjoyed tennis um like i said i've never i've never turned that enjoyment of playing it into caring about watching it ever um i know people do right. get super into it uh but yeah like not, nothing i was i was definitely you know the, the first trailer that came up for this film was you know it was, it was pretty pretty pulsing and it was it was it was kind of an exciting trailer so i was interested in seeing this film but it had nothing to do with uh the the presentation of tennis at all you know it was more like a oh for sure you know. <laughs> i mean i don't i don't feel like the trailer emphasizes the tennis at all i think the trailer takes the fact that it's guadagnino and it emphasizes the romance right yeah. like the steamy what is this thing gonna be yeah yeah um, I should mention, for some reason, watching tennis didn't even occur to me when you asked if I was a tennis person. <laughs> um, I've, I've never been someone who watched it. Like, I'm my most recent references are like Federer and Nadal or something. And even then, I didn't really watch them. I just was like vaguely aware of who they were. Yeah. I, I don't know why. It's just never been something that I've tuned into. But, you know, if I'm near a court or whatever, I do enjoy playing. I think it's a good full body workout. And yeah, yeah. it's fun. Cool. All right. Well, we don't watch tennis, but we did watch this film. Are you ready to get into it, Stephen? I'm ready. I literally walked here from the movie theater, so we're getting fresh <laughs> thoughts today. <laughs> there, 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 there's the, the straight up heavy, fast serve coming our way of whatever your thoughts on this film are. But to give you a chance to sort of, you know, recuperate, uh, we are going to go ahead and play the trailer for Challengers and then come back and give everybody our thoughts on the film. Hi. Hey. Tashi Duncan. She's gonna turn a whole family into millionaires. She'll have a fashion line, a foundation. 
You were incredible today. Thank you. I mean, it wasn't even like tennis. It was an entirely different game. Hey, come hang out with us later. Want me to come suck you in? No, we can just keep talking. Nah, 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 come on. How often does this happen? Going after the same girl? Not as often as you think. We usually have different types. So you're saying I should be flattered? Aren't you everybody's type? Come here. Which one of us? He's not in love with you. What makes you think I want someone to be in love with me? It's nice to see you lit up about something, even if it's my girlfriend. Art's got his coach, Tashi Donaldson, who also is his wife. I'm playing for both of us, Tashi. I think maybe we're disturbed by the fact that she could have been in this someone like me. When we were teenagers. When we were teenagers. Hey, I love you. You don't know what tennis is. It's a relationship. We went somewhere really beautiful together. I'm taking such good care of my little white boys. I assume you planned this? Not this part. All right, so that was the trailer for Challengers. Uh, let me see if I can <laughs> follow all this. Um, so basically, it's a former uh, tennis prodigy who is now coaching her now husband, and who he's been on a series of losing streaks. And to sort of pump him up and get him ready to get his mojo back, she puts him into one of these Challenger uh, tournaments. And it just so happens that his ex-best friend, who is also her former lover... <laughs> is also playing in that tournament. Nailed it. Stephen Miller, what did you think of Challengers? Uh, yeah, so I was talking off off mic about the metaphor of tennis and relationships, of, of how obvious that metaphor is, to the point where I felt like we must have talked about it on the pod, even though I'm pretty sure we've never reviewed a movie about tennis. Um, <laughs> and like I was alluding to the fact that this movie does not have a subtle bone in its body. The, the metaphors, they're served at you directly straight over the net over and over again with force um you know tennis is a struggle between the mental and the physical between strategic thinking and raw passion uh, playing tennis is a metaphor for a relationship the desire to win is a metaphor for passion and romance um it is not subtle and god bless it for that because this movie fucking rules uh, i was such a fan of this direct in your face version of Luca Guadagnino style. Um, I, I would say plot wise um, from the trailer that we just listened to or that you, you watched and I listened to, um, I think it presents itself kind of misleadingly. Like, like it, it seems like it is going to be a Zendaya is a girl boss. And this is a love triangle about her with tennis as some kind of metaphor, the end, you know, and, and I don't believe that is the movie, you know, like the, the movie is very yeah. much evenly stacked in terms of screen time with all three characters, like maybe even tipped a bit more towards the the two men who are competing compared to the inner workings yeah. of Zendaya's mind. Um, and it has a whole lot more tennis than I was expecting. Um, but <laughs> I know even though it's about tennis, I just didn't, uh, I, I don't know, I didn't know how much it would be about yeah. tennis. Um yeah, yeah. But energy wise, I think the trailer is still spot on because this is a pulsing, crowd pleasing, exciting, steamy movie. Uh, and I think all three stars are so goddamn good in this movie. Um, Zendaya as Tashi Duncan, like she's the biggest character in terms of her mystique, you know, the gravitational pull that she carries. Um she has a lot of complicated desire in the movie, which is a thing that Guadagnino obviously likes to explore with people. But unlike, um, you know, Timmy in Call Me By Your Name or something, her cards are mostly held close to the chest. Like, we don't get access to her inner thought life for much of this movie. We get a little bit 
in later parts, but a lot of the time she is this icon, this symbol, the the object of want for everyone else. She is like the army hammer, um, not in any way <laughs> except for the character that he played in Call Me By Your Name. Um, <laughs> She she is this force of nature that provokes this response in the people around her. Uh, and she's incredible at it. Like, she's really, really, really good. She holds the screen. Um, she has that power of her charisma. You believe her even in her first interactions with these two boys at the time. You believe that she has that, like, confidence and swagger that she can completely change their lives. She can basically home wreck them, right? She can break them because they want to be close to her. Um, it's really hard yeah. to sell that. And I think she sells it while also still feeling like a human being. Um, Mike Feist, uh, who you might remember as Connor in Dear Evan Hansen. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Um he playing Art Donaldson, uh, I think he's really good in this kind of, it isn't quite a pathetic sniveling role. Like he's self-aware. He has a lot of moments where he is like more complicated than that, you know, kind of hollow portrait might sound. Um, but he's the guy who is devoted and caring and very strategic and very good and very committed to everything that he does. Um, but he's maybe just a little bit boring because of that fact. Uh, whereas Josh O'Connor, who... I have only seen from an art house movie that was a can last year, uh, but maybe you've seen him in things if you've watched like prestige television or something. Um, yeah, I haven't. No. I have, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I thought he was really good too here as Patrick, uh, who is the contrast. He's the guy who's all passion and fire. He's a, a wrecking ball, right? He's sweaty. He's muscular. His form when he serves is not right, but it is so strong and heavy. And he just, he approaches life that way. He is the, you know, bad boy sounds a little, whatever, not the right way to explain it. But he fills that role of that char character. He's the one who, he wants to be an equal up here. He wants to fight. He wants to like brawl, you know? Um, and I think that is just so well done. Like all three of them are just this to me, perfectly balanced version of how you would play these characters in a way to create um, romantic and just dramatic um, tension. Like, I think this whole movie revolves around the, the push and pull of the three of them. Um, you know, we were alluding to a conversation that happens in the movie where Patrick doesn't want to be a part of the Tashi fan club. He wants to be her peer, right? That is how he wants to relate to Zendaya's character. And Art wants to support her. He's okay with being devoted. And, like, she loves that, but the movie is kind of probing, do you want to be in love with someone who is just there to lift you up? Or do you want someone who has their own gravitational pull? Um, yeah, I just thought it was so good. It's a sexy, exciting, twisty movie. I found its commentary on relationship dynamics and, you know, love versus lust and passion. Um, even if obvious, I thought it was very provocative. Like, it definitely made me, um, I kept changing, not who I was siding with, but my feelings about relationships in this movie and the dynamic, like, kept changing exactly when Luca wanted it to, right? Um, and I yeah. also want to say, like, the structure, I was a little worried at first because this is a movie that jumps all over. You know, it begins with a tennis match and then it's like 13 years earlier and then it jumps forward a little bit and then forward to the match and then back 12 years and forward one night and back and... It, they pulled it off amazingly well. Like, I never was confused. I, I thought it worked. I thought every time there's a time jump, it fits with the emotional stakes that are happening in the tennis match, which is kind of the framing device for this whole thing. Uh, it reveals its cards at the right time. And yeah, I I was just into it. Um, it wouldn't be a Guadagnino movie if there wasn't a homoerotic element to it. Uh, and I thought that was also pulled <laughs> off well in this movie. But, you know, uh, unlike the, the trailer makes it seem like this is going to be like the threesome movie. And it definitely isn't that. Like, the yeah, it, it plays it much more like I don't want to say realistic because obviously people do have threesomes, but this is not some like holy erotic fantasy of like three people who are, you know, having sex with each other. Like this is a movie about actual relationship dynamics between people that you believe. And even the moment in the trailer, I think in context, it totally fits with the characters. And yeah, I just, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm still kind of like vibrating from this movie. I just was so into it and it ends on such a fucking high note. Um, 
Chris, what did you think of Challengers? Yeah, um, I also really enjoyed this film. I think that, you know, as we've been talking about, like, it is a very propulsive film. Like, that for, I mean, there is a second trailer, which I think is awful. Mm -hmm. it, it misses all of the, like, concussive nature of the music and it, it doesn't have the hype it feels like they're trying to sell more of the relationship side of things and i think that trailer sucks uh but this movie delivers exactly what that first trailer was sort of promising um and i had a lot of fun with it i think that you know it, it's funny the the worry that you might have been feeling when the jumping around was happening i 100 percent was feeling that at the time mm -hmm. but as soon as you jump a few times and you realize that like a this is this is Luca sort of teasing the audience the way that <laughs> that Tashi yeah. would tease the boys, where it's like there is an expectation of what you want from any given scene, and he is right when the scene is at its highest moment, he is gonna rip you away from that and send you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna be like, ah, oh, no, why did you do that to me? <laughs> but you're going to get a juicy nugget that's going to recontextualize all the other scenes that you've been watching so far. And like, it's like one of those things where like, I want to complain about it, but it's actually a genius way to do this because when you, as you kind of hinted at when you were talking about, you know, seeing the actual trailer and what you expect from this film, there is, you know, everybody who sits down to watch this film is going to be like, I know this story, right? It's like two, two guys who are both buying for the same person. Um, kind of like fighting over her and like but they're also fighting over each other in this match but really it's vying for this one woman's heart or whatever and that is not really what this film is and there are different ebbs and flows and where the story between these three characters goes over the many years that it's supposed to take place with um and i think that like it's really smart to break up that sort of excitement with the revealing of certain bits of information because you know you leave one scene and you you kind of come up with your own idea of where you think the narrative goes from there but then when you jump back like a couple years before that mm -hmm. then you realize that you had the wrong context when you were watching that scene just now and you know you, you kind of talked about watching these characters and kind of like changing who you're rooting for or something like that this is a film where you're not technically rooting for everybody because in any one given scene you can be like well fuck this person this person deserves x this person doesn't but then like when you see the order in which different events play out like throughout the, the entire relationship and you're like oh i guess i can't really rely on this i mean you could go back to the initial meeting mm -hmm. and kind of project forward from there and say like well i think she was into this person right. in that initial meeting, but because of the nature of the way they set up their interactions together um, and kind of what they're playing with, which you can maybe talk about in spoilers later, mm -hmm. like everything's out the window. Like everything that you kind of assume and set into a place where you would want it to go is kind of just completely thrown away. And I think that like, you know, you, you already talked about the obvious metaphor of tennis, but there is this sort of repeated uh, motif like throughout the film where characters are asking, like, are we talking about tennis right now or are we talking about something else? Mm -hmm. And it's like this film is that conversation the entire time. Yeah. And it's like the, the best way to not be too on the nose with your metaphor is to make the entire film just about that metaphor. Right. <laughs> and it's like it's I, it, it's kind of. It's like every single thing that I could lob out as a complaint about this film would be immediately returned exactly. as an actual strength of the film. Yep. And it's like one of those things where I'm like, God damn it. Like, I like I mean, I wanted to like this movie from the beginning, but it's like as I was kind of going on this roller coaster through the film, I was like, ah, I'm mad that I'm liking it this much. <laughs> it, uh, it almost feels unfair how well it works. I mean, you, you mentioned you yeah. wanted to like it going in. I... I mean, I always want to like something when I go into the theater, but I was yeah. not, like, stoked on this movie by any means. Like, I think Alamo played the trailer roughly 100,000 times, uh, so I had seen it <laughs> so much. And in my mind, it felt like the kind of desperate escalation that you do when you've got a movie that is kind of just okay, but you're throwing all the force of marketing behind it to make yeah. people go see it. Like, I, I was not feeling confident at all watching this movie, and it, it just won me over, you know, um serve by serve whatever tennis metaphor you want to give it just kept yeah. throwing fastballs at me and i kept being like holy shit you did it again um we will get to it in spoilers but i will just tease here an example of how well this movie works there's a moment pretty early in the movie where a thing happens that is very clearly going to tee up a callback you know um yeah and when it's coming 
I saw it from a mile away, right? Like, like I, I saw it probably yeah. like five minutes or whatever before it happened. And I had the biggest grin on my face being like, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, that, I, I went through that same experience, but I was like, I, I, was, I was almost all the way on the opposite side where I was like, wait, are they not going to do it? There's no way they're not going to do it, <laughs> I right? I knew they had Come to. Come on. Because yeah. <laughs> yeah. like at the point where like everybody in the audience started losing their shit, I was like... Dude, I've been here for 30 minutes. I know. Yeah, I was uh, I was feeling the same way. My my crowd got there the moment it happened and I was like, "Welcome yeah. aboard, guys." <laughs> took <laughs> took a little while, but it like like that's what I mean about the obviousness. Like it it is obvious yeah, yeah. in the way that it is just extremely well constructed, so it has to go that way. Um and it yeah, it, yeah. it feels satisfying when it happens. It doesn't feel like a misdirect or like a um I, I don't know. This is just a movie that gives you what you want. But like you said, it teases you enough with the the jumping back and forth to make it not be boring. It makes it exciting, even if it's giving you everything you want. It is doing it in a way that is like keeping you coming back, coming back, coming back. And it is just a, I don't know. I, I just felt an energy leaving this movie that I don't know if we don't take festivals into account. I don't know that there was a movie this year so far that I felt that where when I left the theater, I was just like fist pumping. Um, yeah, yeah. Th there were movies that I liked a whole lot, right? Like Dune 2 uh, is an example. I liked Civil War, even though I was a little bit mixed on some of the not messaging, but like whatever, we, we got into it in the episode. But this yeah, is yeah. probably the first of the year that I was just like unambiguously thrilled. <laughs> and um, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still riding that high. It's just a... Uh, Lucan nailed it. Yeah, yeah. It it is it is uh it's like one of the things that I wrote down uh was just that like this is a film that 100% calls it shot mm -hmm. um like constantly. Yeah. And then it executes on that exactly. Like it's 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 one of those things where like uh, again, I've I've already made this point, but I'll make it again. Even the ending of the film normal me would not like the decision there. Yeah. But it's like it said this an hour ago, right. and then it paid it off, and it's just like I have to just go like, fucking yeah. Like, uh, is there a tennis version of golf clapping? <laughs> it's, it's, it's like I'm just like, holy shit, you did it! Like, <laughs> yeah, I think the ending is fantastic in this movie. Like, yeah, like yeah, the, yeah. the yeah. ending, ending, like the the last two minutes or something. It, it well, it's just yeah, like yeah, a yeah. crescendo to this perfect point of. Um, it, it is all symbolism. Like you said, the whole movie is a metaphor and it is talking about how it is a metaphor in a way that makes it invincible. But the the movie is also about the the blurring of lines, right? Like the, the movie is about how this passion, this obsession, this focus, for it to work, it has to be the thing it symbolizes. It has to be a relationship. It has to be romantic. It has to be intense. And um yeah it, it like like whiplash or movies like that it just works like it sells me on the intensity of the thing that you devote your life to doing um and fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm trying to think if there's anything non-spoilery i can i mean i guess i can try to i can try to be vague mm -hmm. about the character of of patrick yeah. um so you kind of talked about like you, you, you talked about him very positively, um, <laughs> and and I'm I'm not taking away from the performance there, but I think that I see him as I see him as a character who has skated by on raw natural talent, but I see him as kind of a fuck up, mm, yeah. Um, and like I feel that like I, it's a weird thing where like I never. By like he has charm, but the charm works when he's at a party holding a Coca Cola right. and just being charmy. When he is like living in the back of his car and sort of just like, just th there are there are times where I think like the script allows his charm to succeed where I don't buy it succeeding. Mm. <laughs> and I I don't know there was something weird about him where like I I I see him as as way more desperate than. Like he he's sleazy and he's desperate, but that comes off as confidence. Mm. But I I think that like I don't I don't buy it as not being gross. <laughs> In interest, I mean it is a little gross for sure. Um, yeah, yeah. 
it, it worked on me. I Joanna wound up not being able to make it because she's doing a school assignment. So I didn't get to ask her if she found him sexy. <laughs> you know, so you you can only take my <laughs> word for it that I believed. I believed that he would be attractive in the moment, but it's attractive in the kind of, I mean, I mean, Zendaya says it at some point in the movie. It's like, this was cute when we were 18, you know, like it's attractive yeah. in a way that is attractive as like a college student. Right. And yeah. I can completely understand as a full grown adult, how that becomes pathetic in a way that might reverberate to other people as no longer being charming. But I still think, I don't know. I, I think, uh, Josh O'Connor just like sells it so well that for me it worked because what he is is profoundly confident. He's very swaggery. He he does what he wants. Like he's an animal of instinct, and yeah, he he is very obviously those things. And the movie very obviously wants him to be a fuck up and a sleazoid, and for you to see that as like like <laughs> you can basically smell him when you watch this movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it wants it, but but for me, as and again, I liked Bones and all, so Luca can pull me as far as he wants in the direction of like sweat and grossness and energy as also being sexuality or passion. You know, like I, I've already, I've yeah, already yeah. found it sexy to watch people eat people. Like I can definitely take a guy sleeping in his car and still find it sexy. But but I, I guess I guess the difference is in Bones and all, you have two people who are charged up about eating people. Mm -hmm. And they can like make out in all the blood and stuff, yeah. and and that that makes sense. But I'm imagining one of those people not being a cannibal, mm. and then still thinking, you know, like like still having that person ah, want to participate in it. I, I would say one of the people both is and isn't, and that's kind of what the movie is about. But we can we can get to that in in spoilers. I think it's uh it's the the angel and demon on her shoulder, um, basically that this movie is toying with. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like she wants to eat like some bones <laughs> yeah she, she's in for the bones but not the all or she's in for like the tendons and ligaments but maybe not <laughs> yeah yeah oh man i'm still thinking of that injury scene <laughs> oh I, as someone who like from running my knee is the thing that always gets screwed up you know like clockwork yeah. every like five or six months it hurt me to watch yeah. that scene so badly. And we're not spoiling anything. They put in the trailer that this happens. Yeah, um, it's, in, it's in the trailer. But yeah, as yeah. somebody who has dislocated their knee, uh, Ooh. it's uh, and, and it's the same knee, too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a thing where I'm like, uh, even even when I was like in the trailer, I was looking at another thing during that scene and just hearing the sound triggered me. <laughs> it was like, oh, God. Uh, it's played well but anyways <laughs> should we get to a uh, verdict so we can make mosey our way on on into the main event sure all right so for now steven if you're gonna even say must see <laughs> recommend with the caveat wait for rental <laughs> pass the caveat or must avoid what would you give it i'm, I'm giving this a must see i think it is crowd pleasing and also extremely well made and does make you think even if it makes you think about giant obvious metaphors i think all of that is a strength uh, i think this movie embraces what it is and it just does it with gusto and i'm i'm here for it I'm, i have not actually scrolled through to see all the things we watched this year so far but i'm pretty sure this is my favorite theatrical release of the year so far so take take that for what you will uh, i think this movie rocks and you've already you've already given the caveat of theatrical release. Sure, like not yeah, counting, we, we've seen things already, in festivals yeah. too. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, cool. Um, well, uh, I am also going to give it a must see, uh, as might have been apparent from my forgetting the other options <laughs> after I said must see to you as options for you to pick. Um, yeah, it, it's a it's a film that uh, has all the energy you need and it's also a thing where like i don't know if this will hit as hard at home later like being yeah. in an audience even when steven and i were saying we were miles ahead of our audiences um for a for certain event happening later in the film it was still amazing to feel everybody else respond <laughs> in that moment uh and sitting at home you might just be annoyed that you're waiting for it to happen because yeah. the director is definitely teasing you <laughs> yep <laughs> um but 
yeah, it was an amazing film. Everybody should go check it out. Um, but we're about to get into spoilers. So for now, if you're not going to stick around for spoilers, Stephen, go ahead and let people know where they can find you uh, throughout the week if they want to. Uh, people can find me on Threads or Blue Sky at S. David Miller or sdavidmiller.com. People can find me at ChristopherInRealLife.com or ChristopherIRL at a number of different social platforms. You can find the podcast over at TheSpoilerWarning.com where you get a bunch of the back episodes of the show. If you want to subscribe to the show, you can do so on Overcast, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, or wherever podcasts are found. If you want to know when the episodes go live, you can follow us at Twitter.com slash SpoilerWarning, Facebook.com slash TheSpoilerWarning, or Instagram.com slash TheSpoilerWarning. If you want to get a hold of us directly, you can send an email to fans at TheSpoilerWarning.com or you can use the contact form on our site. Music for this episode will come from a track selected from Artlist.io, so hopefully you're enjoying that. That music is going to fade up. We are, I don't know, going to go do a training montage or something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Get ready for the main event where Steve and I are just going to be doing our best to lob things over the the fence, the gate, the net. 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 It's it's a net. (laughs) net. Uh. (laughs) Unambiguously, the net. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Um, See, I know all about Dennis. Hell yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm going to stop talking and then take a little break and then we're going to come back and give you spoilers. So see you in a moment. <laughs> All right. We are back. Uh, this is Spoiler Territory. It's the after part of our review of Challengers. We're going to be talking full bone spoilers, so watch out. Um, Steven, where would you like to start? Huh. I, I don't really know where we should start. I, I guess we can unpack the actual three way dynamic. Like I, I alluded to, not, I don't mean literally the three way scene. I mean like the, <laughs> the, the, the three way relationship between the main characters, uh, which I alluded yeah, yeah, to yeah. before but didn't really get into. Okay. So uh, Tashi was dating Patrick. Um, for a little while yeah. they clearly had an intense relationship but it wasn't all that quote serious and art was very jealous he was friend zoned yeah. i related well, to that let, <laughs> let, let let's back all yeah. the way up to the beginning okay. so art didn't even know who tashi was mm-hmm. i mean i think he knew of her like the, the name but had never watched her play yeah uh patrick was like dude the super hot chick is super good at tennis come watch this match and then Art sort of like falls in love in the moment watching her play. And then they both go to a party to try to meet up with her. They don't have any expectations of where that's going to go, but they have to meet her because that's what they want to. Um, the result of that night, we can leave, we leave the, the three way sure. potential for, for later. But the result of that night is a challenge that one of them will get the phone number based on a match that will take place like the following day or yep. something a match that they were already had a gentleman's agreement one of them would throw yep. so that the other one could advance their career more yeah so their grandma uh, obviously... wouldn't have a stroke <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so we don't actually find out until later but patrick wins that match mm-hmm. even though he was supposed to throw it he gets the number and that's what kicks off their yep. initial yep. relationship of course, of course. so and so, you know, technically Patrick had dibs. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He, he had yeah. her heart fair and square. And like, yeah, you yeah. know, uh, Art is being a little bit of a sniveling prick trying to sabotage their relationship. You know, like he he is the friend zone who is like, he doesn't love you. You're better than him. And he plants this seed that does become an argument that um, the Tashi has with Patrick that ultimately causes them to split up and Tashi to hurt her knee. Right. Um, but there's yeah. this kind of what I love is the camaraderie between Art and Patrick is such that even when they are fighting each other, even when they're competing with each other, there's like a smirk, there's a joy to it, you know? And like Art tries to go at Patrick and like fuck things up basically. And Patrick is like, I'm proud of you, dude. I'm proud you're fight you're fighting for it. this is this is what I wanted <laughs> to see in you, man. This is your passion. And that kind of like um that swagger that is so big that he is like happy for this guy to be jealous of him and try to fight and try to like fuck things over for him. It is what underlines the movie in a lot of ways. Um, like, like that is the character trait that is a part of their relationship is they are, they are happiest when they are fighting and going at each other. And that is the kind of, 
if you want to have the more homoerotic read of the movie, that is like the pent up energy that like finally bursts through at the end of the movie is this like we we can focus this on one another. We don't have to be talking about someone else. Um, yeah. And, and I think that was just really, really well done. I, I mean, there's actual, you know, homoerotic things in the movie. It's clear that Patrick is at least bi based on his Tinder pro like people he's swiping on on Tinder. Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I thought that was just really clever. And then in the present, you know, you have this kind of classic situation where Tashi is married well, to Art. Well, yep. To be fair... To be fair, he is Tinder swiping with the intention of getting a place to sleep. Sure, of course. So yeah, he's, you uh, could make the argument that he's like, yeah, I'll fuck anybody to get a bed yeah, tonight. He's, he's, he's para-humping, I think was the term for that. <laughs> yeah, but still. I thought that's when you jump out of a plane and hump on your way down. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, so so in the present, the, the main dynamic of the movie is Zendaya... She is someone who she definitely she cares about her life like she did when she was 18. She had a plan. She had a future. But she also had something that Art didn't have, which was a deep passion. Right. She didn't just want to win. She wanted to feel it like when she's waxing poetic about the 15 seconds in the game. Right. Where she was actually playing with the other opponent when they were really vibing with each other, when they were one person who was anticipating every move. That is what she yeah. does it for. Like, she does it for that chase. And she has this aggressive desire to win, like this passion for it. And, and that's yeah. why I said that I think she is half the cannibal, right? Like, she she has part of the Patrick, right? She has the extreme swagger, the belief in her own greatness, the desire to just fucking be in the moment and do the thing. But then she also has the expectations of her family, the desire for how she's going to be the greatest and how she's going to get there, the conniving. So I think she has both art and Patrick in her, if if that makes sense. Also, literally, yeah, I mean, because I... of Atlanta. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, uh, yep. We are in spoilers. Mm. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I, I guess for me, I see I see a, a very strong distinction between her and Patrick. Mm. I, I see Patrick as he he has never improved because he just like pre had some natural talent that he never cultivated. He just brute force smashes it and he's using his charm and his like mind games and stuff to try to win matches and he'll never actually be genuinely good. He just is good mm. uh, naturally. He'll never be a good player. Mm. He's just good at tennis at some level that allows him to beat others who are not like the top 100 players or whatever right. as he's trying to break his way in there. I think Tashi... Like the reason why I think she gets so upset when he's having the conversation about them being peers and not not like she doesn't. It, the reason why she sees there being difference is because he doesn't understand or actually give a shit about tennis. Mm -hmm. He just can play tennis, yeah, and he's trying to use that as a way to get famous and do whatever. But he doesn't actually care about the sport, and mm -hmm. Tashi really does care about the actual game of tennis and what it means to play it at the highest level. And she doesn't, like, she, the reason why she wants to be the best player is not for all the accolades and stuff like that. It's because she wants to experience tennis from the highest level. Right. And, like, I think she's kind of disgusted by his inability to pursue that mm. because he's just all about, like, hey, look at me. I'm going to all these things and I'm doing these matches. And it's, like, I, 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 I just see that I don't see her having a piece of him I mean, yeah, outside of the joke earlier, yeah, I, I don't see it. Or, yeah. I, I get it. It takes on a different um, a different form. I, I guess one question there, though, is do you think his inability to see tennis or love tennis for itself, is that an inevitable part of him? Because I feel like there are two moments in this movie where he is very clearly stating, like, help me get there. You know, like, first when they are dating, he like he's talking to Art, and he's saying, like, she's changing me. Like, I'm I'm wanting to settle down more now. Like, I'm wanting to be more of that person. Like, he, he has a desire to become the person who is devoted to the thing, right? And I know it, right there it's devoted to Tashi, but Tashi is a metaphor for tennis, right? Um, and, and then later, 
um, the week of their big match, you know, uh, in somewhere in New York that I forget, uh, New Rochelle, um, he is talking to her and he's like, can you train me? Because you know I have the raw potential to actually be great. Like, together we could make this a thing. And I... I see that as genuine. Like, I don't see that as just this this guy who will always be a fuck up trying to be manipulative. Like, I see a real desire in him to understand the love. Like, he wants to meet her in that place, just like Art wants to meet her in the place of being actually technically good enough to be worthy of her. Like, I think they both are trying to, like, take, be the half of themselves that are not Tashi. Like, they want to be more of her. I took that interaction to be... I mean, this this kind of goes back to my thing about, like, how much is he just a fuck up versus being mm. more than that? To me, I, I saw it as, for all those years, he never wanted to think that he actually needed her help. And now, because he's at, like, whatever the tennis version of rock bottom is, <laughs> he is like, okay, I really can't do this. And he sees what Art has and wants his life like, you know, being able to stay yeah. in a fancy hotel and not give any shits because he's got plenty of money and sponsorships and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I think it's still less about can I be great and being about can I be paid? <laughs> but <laughs> you know it, it's I mean? interesting, though, because um, <clears throat> Tashi very clearly throws out that he is, if not a trust fund kid, he comes from wealth. And at any point, he could have comfort and convenience and money if he needs to. So it, it seems like it's but, more pride that he want, he wants to feel like he is great, which maybe is different than wanting to participate in the act of, in the beautiful thing that is tennis, but it also isn't just wanting money, right? Like he, he wants to get money in a self-aggrandizing personal way that proves that he is the best. I, I, I guess if, if I can if I can put it, if I can shift it to a different sport and like go into like, the movie Ferrari or Ford v Ferrari or any other movie that has Ferrari in the title um, about racing there in those films, there's a difference between a person that gets to drive the car that means something that you're driving it and being a person who understands what it means to truly drive. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sure. And I think that Tashi is the person who, no matter what the car is, will drive the best you've ever seen anybody drive. Yeah. And he is the guy who wants to be in the most expensive car that everybody is obsessed with sure. and be the guy driving that car mm -hmm. because that's who he is. And I think that like that means different things to to different people. Yeah. OK, I, I, I get it. I, I still think there is a lot of overlap or at least he believes that he sees her more clearly. And the fact that she does, even in Atlanta, even the night before the big game in New Rochelle, she does still go to him, makes me think she also believes that he sees something in her, right? And we can talk so... about the cheating because I'm I'm someone who usually does not go for it in movies. It's not that I'm a prude. It's just that it instantly makes me lose some first-person connection with the cheater because it's just a thing that I can't imagine ever doing and feeling fine with. Yeah. Um, this movie, I actually like it. Like, I think it fits with Tashi's whole thing. Like, like that is how well the movie worked on me, is I'm okay even with that. Yeah, and, and, I, and I think, too, like, even before we get into the, the cheating itself, sure. is what I see about Tashi is she missed her chance, and she will hitch her ride to anything that, like... For I for I step in it too much. Mm -hmm. She she is she needs to achieve the true greatness, right? And she will take the path that gets her there. And she hitched a ride to a person who she turned into a champion, like yeah. a genuine champion. Like he is a you know one of the top players. Yeah. He's famous. He's he's basically she has got him to the place that she wanted him to be, and now he's on a downward spiral. Right. Of he just he, his heart's not in it. Um, we learn later that he wants to give it up that year, no matter mm -hmm. how the end thing goes. Like he wants to retire, and she, she can't have that. She needs, she needs to go on and pursue this heightened sense of of the sport. And she is, she loves that more than she's ever loved either of those two guys. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, she constantly says that she she doesn't want people to love her, and probably didn't love either of them. But she has like 
done so much work to get him to a place and then now she's realizing that all that investment has amounted to nothing and then now she's like fuck it this dangerous thing maybe i can get there with that and that's kind of the way i feel about it do you think are you talking like emotionally that's where her head is at because the option of greatness by having sex with him in a car like that that does not get her there right that is a pure no, desire for him <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 i i mean headspace period uh-huh. about why she even entertains his presence mm-hmm. at all and doesn't just tell him to fuck off um yeah is because she knows that she might he might be the chance to get what she's looking for uh eventually yeah I've, like the, the the raw animalistic whatever that's there sure yeah. um you know there's not nothing more sexy than uh fucking a dude in a car next to a giant five-story building covered with your face and your husband um but <laughs> i love by the way I, I assume this was intentional sound design that you're hearing the wind blow through a banner back and forth so you're hearing like the er er <laughs> <laughs> oh man there, there is the like i love everything luca's doing in this film except for the weird slow motion stuff right before mm. they start getting it on like there's this moment where it's like these weird slow motion shots of each person's face and i was like i'm not really vibing now and like the, the girl in the seat next to me was like what the fuck is this <laughs> I was like, okay cool it's, <laughs> just it's not just me <laughs> Yeah, the, the the girl on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm willing to have Luca do whatever he wants at that point. Um, but my justification for why that looked so different than anything else is to me that is one of the only moments where we are actually getting a little bit inside the head or desire of Tashi, rather than seeing it from the outside, and like inside yeah. is more. Um, there's like a vibrance to it. It's just like stylistically different. And everything up until now has been her calculating and us seeing like the output of her calculation. And this is one just kind of like want. So it gets to look different. That that was how I justified it at, at least. At, at that point too, she's already asked him to throw the game, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 the, all these characters, I don't trust any of their motive. Well, I, I guess I mean Art is just sad, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's <laughs> like, like I don't technically have to trust him because he's just kind of pathetic on his <clears> own. <throat> but like <laughs> Patrick and Tashi, I I never trust any of their motivations are consistent or uh or thinking that far ahead, right? It feels like they make a lot of brash decisions and kind of go for it um in the moment um which is cool or whatever but it's just like one of those things where it's like i don't i can never fully understand their decision making because mm. i always kind of just don't trust their full I, I don't trust they fully thought about it they're just kind of reacting in the moment yep. um and then like i said art is just sort of like i'm gonna, I'm gonna go to sleep because yeah. <laughs> i'm i'm sad and i don't want to do tennis no more <laughs> Yeah, he's the easiest to understand, for sure. I do... Yeah, yeah. Maybe this is just the me that roots for, you know, marriage and past lives in every other movie, but, like, I do want to believe that Tashi loves art even as she's going through all this... Ca- like, I don't think it is only because she wants him to be great at a thing. I think it's more... She will not be fulfilled in life unless she in some way can achieve this vision and he was the person who was there for her. So he's the person she loved. And now she has to turn him into the thing that can be there, which is similar to what you said. But I, I, I just think it isn't like she could love anyone and she really just needs a person to mold. I think it's like now that she is stuck with this. Like to me, the love is represented by the kid, right? Like that is a part of her life that is not tactical. It has nothing to do with tennis. It has nothing to do with any of that. And that is a part of her life too, but she needs the goal to strive for or else she's going to feel like half a person. And that was, um, yeah, that's kind of how I saw her. So maybe like a little bit more gracious in terms of, um, her, her feelings. Yeah. And I guess the only, the only, the only thing that I really feel differently about is that I think some of that has died. Mm, Um, and it's, it's the fact that it, it was all, it was all simpatico, when both those things came together in one mm-hmm. package. And now that half of that has dropped away, now she is like, 
Hmm. Like, may, was it actually Sympatico? Right, right. Were both these things always there, or did I conflate the two? And now I'm in this place where it's like, I, I she, she loves the game so much yep. that like everything else is a is a step down from her focus on this thing, and it's kind of like b- not being able to achieve that takes precedence in her mind and her heart yep. over those other things. Right. Um, but I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I, as we'll get to when we yeah, actually get we, to the ending. We can get to the ending, I think. <laughs> okay, you want to just go straight there? Totally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so one of, like, as we were talking earlier about this film, like, really, really calling it shot uh, uh, constantly. Um, but, like, the big one, the one that, like, basically leads and calls the shot of the ending is the conversation you already brought up where they're talking about how in that game a long time ago there were 15, 15 true seconds where they were playing real tennis. Mm-hmm. Like everything was working. It's like everything was out the window. There were, it was two people alone on a court in perfect sync with each other in a real true relationship playing at the height of what the, what is possible in the game. And at the end, while people are trying to throw the game, you know, double faulting, doing all the stupid, sh- stupid shit, they eventually go into one final round of volleys, I guess. Right, right volleys? That's what they call mm-hmm. them? Um, and they play that perfect thing and all three of them get exactly what they want yes. all at the same time. And it's like a thing where it's like in any other film, I would be annoyed at this ending, but here I'm like, Jesus, like, this is fucking brilliant. Like the, so everybody, great. everybody got it. I mean, like even the, <laughs> well, first of all, even though this is obvious too, the whole game is such a good metaphor for how these characters are like like the game literally maps onto their relationship right like patrick starts out with swagger and winning but by the second set or act you know whatever you want to call it in the movie um he is hoisted by his own petard he's too he runs his mouth he gets frustrated his his swagger gets in the way and art is able to take the upper hand and then in the end it's just this sweaty tussle where they both just want to win so badly and it becomes a like like that whole arc is literally like also the acts of the movie and the acts of the relationship right like that that is how like cleanly mapped this movie is and as it is building into this will he throw the game will art accept him throwing the game that amazing thing that i'm sure we both were talking about where he like holds the ball to the center of the um yeah the center of the racket in a way to say like I fucked her. I fucked your girl. Yeah, it's like <laughs> lit- Like I did the thing, and how much that um, that screws with art in the perfect way that also gives him the drive and motivation to fight back. It is a, it is also good. And then the build up, like it becomes first person from the eye of the ball, right? Going back and forth and back and forth. And the soundtrack is just blaring at that point, and we're bouncing around, and we are like what is going to happen at least for me i don't even know the rules of tennis is that tie break set just one round or is that meant to be a whole set that they play because we feel it as one round that ends in this beautiful crescendo of leaping over yeah, the yeah, net. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah um i i i didn't bother googling how yeah. the tie break goes and i didn't learn that in my few sessions um in in the apartment complex i grew up in um but I do want to touch on something because I was talking a little bit with Jamie about this too after the after the film, and I I kind of I think I think I might have a different sort of interpretation of why he did that. Like mm-hmm. I you what you were just saying, um, and I might have just been reading between the lines, but it sounds like you think he did the thing to give him the drive so that he could actually play better. Oh, I don't think uh, he wanted to. I think Okay. I don't think he knew. I think that's just the dynamic that oh, Okay, out. okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, cuz cuz to me to me I saw that is I am going to de- like I don't want to throw the game in a dumb way. Yeah. I want to fuck with his head. Yeah. And like like I I think at that point he had decided like fuck it, I'm not doing what she wants. Mm-hmm. Um 
and he was like, I am just going to destroy this guy right now. And he does that thing to purposely fuck with him. And when he doesn't bite, I think there's this moment, like that look they both give each other is both of them saying, fuck her. Yeah. And let's just do this the way we used to do it. Mm -hmm. And it's like they choose to no longer be fighting because of her. And they choose to just do what they do which is play tennis right mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's it's like it's like a moment where they both say like all right i i i scorch her said i i fucked her um and he's like fuck this and then he's like he's because he's technically playing i mean i still don't know whether i still don't know whether he even like whether art I, that conversation where Tashi and Art are there and he's like, I need you to tell me that we'll be okay. And she's like, I'm going to leave you. Is that what you want to hear? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't know. And I, I can't decide whether any of those people were saying the truth course, in the yeah. moment. Yeah. I, so, because she did also then say she's still going to look at him the same way, even if he loses. So I, yeah. I didn't know how much to interpret <laughs> that as literal. Right. And she did immediately sneak out of the bedroom, call Patrick and then go fuck him. So yeah. it, it you know, there, there, there's lots of complicated things there, and it's hard to really know what was going on between those characters' minds. But in this moment, I feel like they both know there is no winning in that moment. Yeah. So they're going to do the thing that they do, which is he is going to be crude and to do the thing. He is like, okay, I, this whole time I've technically been playing for my wife because she needs this. Now I'm going to play for myself. Mm -hmm. And they just get this moment where they get to exist in a vacuum right. and play together in their old style, double style. Um, and Tashi is going to sit there and like witness it and be amazed by it and get her screaming moment because yeah. she is seeing the height of, of this, this match taking place. But she is also doing that alone. Mm. And they are doing this thing together. Interesting. <laughs> I, I feel, I do think there's a little bit of a fucker happening in that moment for sure like they are choosing this is it is literally the scene in the hotel room when they're 18 right they start yeah both trying to kiss her and grazing against each other in the process and then eventually turns into they are making out with each other and she is just yeah. watching and enjoying the fact that she created this thing right this is the the match literally ends the same way <laughs> well not literally yeah but, yeah yeah. So, uh, well, so directly metaphorically swat, that it might as well be literal. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I didn't see it as black and white as it being like, we don't care about her anymore. We are focusing on each other. I saw it as like, they are, it's the same thing as the smirk that like Patrick gives when he realizes that Art is trying to steal Tashi from him. They enjoy the game including the game of being in love with this person like and fighting over this person and i saw it as the three of them all collectively are now in this dynamic where it is a it is a three-way passion because they're they're angry and everything at each other and they both are still aware of her and she loves that they have the energy it, it's similar to what you're saying i just i didn't see it as a like rejection of her really i just saw it as like um it hit this climax right <laughs> like this crescendo yeah. of raw passion and that is what tashi has always wanted is the raw passion and i uh yeah yeah, yeah I, I thought it was just fucking electric yeah 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 the shout too i mean like callback after callback right it's like the movie just has teed up so many things so you can get them all at the same time it's a uh, really really nicely played yeah yeah cool uh any last uh any last thoughts no i think i'm good i think all that can be left to say is come on <laughs> what i shout uh, after uh, we've uh, had 15 seconds of good podcasting <laughs> <laughs> so is that the first time you've ever shouted it? <laughs> I, I mute usually <laughs> all right so <laughs> i think that's it i think uh i think i think we're done all right uh yeah we'll, we'll be back uh 
sometime soon with another episode. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Cause I'm